my topic uh, today is going to be high speed deep diving wahoo lures and I'll tell you a little bit of a story before I get there and we'll explain kind of the whys of it. I went on a, a long range fishing trip in 2018 and what, what happens on a long range trip is when they troll for wahoo um, they have either four or five people at the back doing the trolling and it's called a trolling team and uh, they'll troll for a while and when they get a wahoo yeah, the next team comes up so everybody gets their turn and uh, in 2018 this lure here that you're seeing this orange lure which is my version of a uh, your Zori Bonita and there's other ones that look very very similar called uh, Braid Marauders were the lure of the day and they've been around for a long long time and yes they certainly did catch uh, uh, tuna and I'll show you a picture here right away of, of a tuna caught with a hook that looked exactly like this. So I, being new on this trip, uh, new to tuna fishing, new, new to wahoo fishing, I just kind of was looking around and uh, trying to find out what was what. So some of the people had a lure that looked like this. Now I don't want to name manufacturers but uh, I have to admit when I first saw this lure I thought I'm, I'm a, a Saskatchewan Alberta born guy. I, 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 I saw this and I thought this is the silliest goofiest looking lure I'd ever seen because it's just so so huge. But I have to admit after about five or six days of wahoo fishing. This particular lure was out fishing the marauder style three or four to one. Okay, so you got my attention. So it turns out that I caught two wahoo, my biggest was 45 pounds, on a lure that looked just like this. We only had um, one, my roommate actually had um, a commercial lure and after it had caught about five wahoo, it, it, it had chunks missing and it was teeth marks and it was really, really chewed. But I think that lure caught over 15 wahoo in, um, well, this was a, a 15 day trip, but we, we fished seriously for wahoo for probably five or six days. So the fact that this lure did so well certainly got my attention. So I had an idea that I would try and make these. Now, I have to admit that my initial thought was this, this is a lure that I can't make. Uh, you see the, uh, how the, uh, the bill, the diving bill is uh, incorporated into the hook. I've been making lures for oh, two or three years and I kept looking at this and I, I said, well, I can't, I can't make that. And then I started to look around for the bill material. Well, you can't buy the bill. So then you gotta make it. So again, I went to my, I can't make this lure. And then I found some, um, a plastic supplier on the west end of town, uh, where I live. And I tried something called acrylic, not knowing the difference. And then I found that acrylic was not the kind of plastic because when you, when you machined it, when you ground it, you got little fractures in it. So I finally came up with the right material, which was uh, like polycarbonate which is tough, really, really tough. And now I could machine it, and now I could, I could bond it together to make the three layers that I needed. So now all of a sudden, I decided, well, I'm gonna try and make this. And all sorts of interesting challenges on the way to making this thing. However, after making about 15 or 20 of these things, I realized that this was not a, a trivial hook because it uses hydraulic pressure on this bill to force it down it, it had to be fairly precisely made along the center line and it turned out out of oh, 20 or so lures that I made probably 14 of them actually would work I remember the first one that worked I was in a freshwater lake and all of a sudden it it went down and it hit something and I'm in uh, 25 feet of water and what it hit was, of course, the muddy bottom. And uh, so I know that this lure can go easy 25 feet, probably more. However, this lure is only a part of the story. 
um, for this video. I decided that during the uh, pandemic, uh, I was going to make some special ones. So what I did is I took this uh, as the master and I decided that big is better. So I made these guys. And you say to yourself, wow, those are big, big lures. So this guy, this, this lure is uh, 11 inches, tip to tip, but the body is actually only eight. So when this lure is swimming, this bill is like glass and water. It should be almost invisible. And the, the um, Wahoo always come up from behind and their, their famous trick is to bite the back half off of a, of a bait and then circle around and get the front half. So they, they won't even see this. So this is um, an eight inch body, weighs about 150 grams. Okay, so uh, great. Not all of them work. Well, those are the chances you take when you go fishing. So when I decided to make something bigger, I said, well, how big can I go? So again, this one is uh, 11 inches. This one is 13 inches. This one is 14 inches. And oh my gosh, this one is 15 inches. And you might say to yourself, well, what, what has this guy been drinking? But uh, the body size doesn't increase all that much. So this is an eight inch body. This is a nine and a half inch body. This is a 10 inch body. And this is an 11 inch body. So it's, it's really only three inches difference in body, body size. So one of the things that I was um, going to do is I was going to show you how to make this one, but in parallel, I'm also uh, uh, show you how to make these bigger ones. And really it's the same thing. Materials change just slightly. Um, the material in the, in the bill, I've changed to a, a thicker material. And uh, this one actually is the biggest one that I can make. I can't make any bigger because it, it, is, uh, it is right at the edge of my tools. And one of the tools that I use is a drill to go through a hole in this. And that helps me drill this loop in the front. So you've got to go through the plastic and you go up through the tail and you drill through the plastic. And with any luck, the drill will come out in this area here. Well, in this larger one, the drill can only make it to right about here and it's still buried in the plastic. So I, I had to actually kind of cut it out with a, with a Dremel-like tool with a, with a cutting, little cut, cutting wood. So uh, I know for a fact that the 15 inches are the biggest. Now, we, uh, in my previous series, uh, I went over the construction of these guys. These are uh, about uh, 10 inches long and weigh about uh, 400 grams. And in my videos, we were also working on a smaller version of this an eight inch version as opposed to this uh, 10 inch. The eight inch weighs probably around 250 grams. So this is the more traditional ones. This one has an absolutely tremendous action. These guys have a very subtle twitch to them as they're going through the water. Uh, surprisingly, um, these guys here for as much as they weigh, they don't go any more down, farther down than 20 feet where these, this one will go 30, and I suspect these ones might even go closer to 40 feet. So getting down that low is where, in fact, the Wahoo live most of the time. They can come up for a bait in a heartbeat though. And um, so I'm looking forward to taking these out this spring on a freshwater lake here to try them out. So I thought you might be interested as well. So I'm going to get into how in fact we make this and it's uh, surprisingly it starts out with some computer work.
I have um, taken a picture of the lure, simple picture, and um, uh, brought it in from the camera onto my computer, and it looks like this. Now, one of the important things is that you, you want to make sure that you get the tip of the bill and the tail. But another important, actually very, very important, is you want to see the, the, the bill, the diving bill, edge on. And you'll see why in a little while. Uh, you, you, will, you will ultimately need that for putting your stainless steel wire in exactly the right place. So let's, uh, let's go and first I need to get rid of all of this white space that's around here because that's a distraction. So what I do is I open this with uh, paint. And of course, it's always too big. And then I'm going to get the select tool. I'm going to eventually crop this. So let's grab this. Now you'll see that that crop is a little bit too low. It's going to cut off the top of the lure. So I'll try it again. There we go. And I'll crop it. So that pretty much leaves the, the lure with a very minimum of white space behind it. So I'm going to save that now. Back to the same picture. And it's going to warn me that it exists. So I'm just basically replacing it. And now I'm done with paint, I'll just get rid of it for the moment. So, when I open up this picture, that's what you get. Now that's exactly perfect. So now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to copy this, Control C, and then I'm going to get my Word document up. Now what you'll notice about this Word document, is that it's got a grid already put on it. Now I use that, I put that on with the insert command, insert shapes. There's all kinds of shapes, there's lines and boxes and uh, text you can put in there. And what I do is I uh, put these lines where I think it's going to be an inch, then I print a page. And if it's not an inch, I make it a bit bigger until I can make uh, a grid that I know is to scale. Well, because I don't have to do that right now because it's already done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paste that control V. I'm gonna put that into my document and it, it comes out very big. Don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna scale this thing. So first of all we're gonna move it to the right to line up with the uh, with the grid. And then we know that this one is 11 inches. So we're just going to move this guy up. And, and 11 inches is actually to the back of the lure. So if, if we wanted to make that hook, we could print that out, put that on the board, and cut it up, and you'd have your 11 inch. So, um, but I want to. Copy it again. I'm going to put it back in again. Now this is the same one. Move it over. So now the first size I want to make is 13 inch. Oh, well, I grabbed a little tool here. And you can't go wrong with this tool because it it um, it expands or contracts it linearly. Yeah, it's a little bit jittery, so you got to be a little bit careful with it. Okay, so there now I've got a 13-inch lure. Now one of the other things I'm going to do, I'm going to go insert shapes, and I'm going to get me a line here. And I'm going to go, I'm tracing my stainless steel wire now. Now I suspect you can't see that, so I'm going to make it bigger.
and I'm going to change its color so you can see it even better. Now that will be important when you're putting this bill on. This bill is the, the most technically specific thing that you've got to do in this entire hook. So um, I put that on there so when I print it out I have the position of the stainless steel wire at the same time. Notice this end over here is a little bit higher than the center. There's a problem with this lure because it's so bent I can only cut straight uh, notches with my saw. It leaves this part here a little bit weak. So as long as you know that. So I'm going to take another line. Do that one here as well and I'll uh, turn it red and make it bigger. Okay so now we've got the 11 inch and the 13 inch I guess I could have done a, a 12 inch, but the, there, there are commercially available 12 inches. So now what I'm going to do, I've got another grid here, not sure if this is going to work or not, but we'll see. I'm going to control C this guy to copy him. There he is. Move him over a little bit to line him up. And now I'm going to make a 14 inch short. And again, I'm a bit twitchy. Be careful. Now whatever you do, don't use this bar here because that'll squish him right down <laughs> and that's not what you want. Okay, so now I'm going to do the last one. I think I still have the proper size in here. Yep, there he is. Okay. This is going to be my 15 inch one. That's the fundamentals on how you make the different images. Now, in order to print these out, you will have to take your file to a print shop. I only have an eight and a half and eight and a half by uh, 11 printer and there was a once upon a time I did have it figured out how to print posters but I can't seem to figure that out again but you can just simply take this to a, a place like Staples and when you do make sure you bring the file on a on a little thumb drive and bring a, a tape measure as well so when they print it out that you make sure that these grids are in fact one inch so that will guarantee you that that will be to scale. So this is what you end up with. You end up with uh, paper copies of all the different sizes, the uh, 12, 13, 14, and 15 inch. With those, you are able to make the uh, various outlines and cardboard and, and you would use these on the wood which I'll show you in a little while. Now after you've done that 
you can use the same technique to make pictures of the front bill as well. 12 inch, 13 inch, 14, two 14s, and a 15 inch. Now you'll need those later because you have to build the front bill. And uh, what you do is simply take a picture of the 12 and expand it all the way up. So it's uh, an identical technique. Uh, with, with these builds, you'll, you'll make uh, the cardboard versions of them. And uh, you'll make various aids to help you make this, uh, this build. It is a, a little bit tricky, but um, anyway, that will be in the next part of the video on how we make this. Thanks for watching so far. Thank you.